In this lesson, we're moving away from talking about the Second World War specifically and focusing on the consequences of the Second World War, namely the ability to reconstruct following the conflict itself. So we'll talk about the impact that the conflict has uh, on the uh, on the Soviet Union during this lesson. But we'll also talk about the, the ways in which we see the Soviet Union go from uh, losing 20 million people and having to fight the deadliest war in human history to becoming one of the largest economic superpowers in the world. So ultimately, when we talk about the economic impact of this conflict, the actual uh, economic impact itself for the Soviet Union was severe. It was absolutely detrimental. They destroyed all of the progress that was made from the first three five-year plans. So all of the industrial developments that had been um, implemented had all been destroyed as a result of this conflict. In addition to this, we see that in 1945, not only were 20 million people dead, but 25 million people were homeless. And we have an industry reduction of 66% during this, during this conflict. Now, we also have a poor harvest, which takes place the year after the war finishes in 1946, which, of course, compounded all of these issues significantly. And we now have an even bigger problem that we have to deal with. Stalin had to essentially double down and say that they were going to increase economic output to try and essentially come back to and build back to the point at which they were at the beginning of the conflict before the war had began. And so he declared the target for the USSR was to become the world's leading economy within 15 years. So the, the target for the first five year plans was to uh, increase economic production and to essentially uh, to make up for the shortfall, which Stalin believed was a 100 year uh, decline. But for this new five year plan, this new uh, economic input output that was uh, beginning to take place, it was to essentially allow the USSR to become the world's leading economy by uh, within 15 years. And this came with the introduction of three new five-year plans. So in terms of industry and industrial developments, of course, the five-year plans would be the, 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 the main driving factors of, these, of, these new, um, of this new industry. The first five-year plan uh, was in uh, the fourth in total. So we, we're going to judge these uh, based on the new set of five-year plans. So this first, first five-year plan was the first post-war five-year plan, which is the fourth five-year plan in total, given the fact that the five-year plan started when Stalin takes, uh, takes power. Now, the first five-year plan, or the fourth, depending on how you want to view it, uh, was established from 1946 to last until 1950. And this was actually relatively successful in terms of its input and its ability. Output of oil, coal, and electricity had increased significantly. Now, this is partly due to the policies that were implemented in this five-year plan, but also partly due to the fact that uh, all countries generally experience something of a post-war boom when they uh, fi essentially finish a conflict. Now, if they win a conflict, of course, that is important to note, uh, is the, is the uh, result. So, for example, the amount of coal that was produced in 1945 was 119 million tonnes. Uh, and this had risen by 1950, by the end of the first five-year plan, to 261 million tonnes. So quite a significant increase uh, was had in relation to uh, output of coal. We also see a heavy investment in heavy industry. So we see an 88% of investment going into heavy industry. We also see a number of uh, large scale projects being devised. So for example, these became known as the grand um, projects of communism or Stalin's grand projects of communism. Uh, the aim of course was to ride the wave of the, uh, of the great patriotic uh, fervor that took place after the Second World War, after what Stalin deemed the great patriotic war. Everyone was on a, on a high. There was a very um, great amount of consensus. Everyone was very, very happy that they'd won the, the Second World War. And so in in taking advantage of that, Stalin instigated the grand projects of communism. There was still focus on military spending as well, uh, and this was the result of the Cold War, which emerges almost immediately after the end of the Second World War. If anything, it emerges during the Second World War when we see some of the, the conferences at Yalta and Potsdam. 
by 1952, total military spending was actually around 25% of the government budget. The aim here was to try and keep up with the Western counterparts who now became the new enemies in relation to Stalin. So the United States, for example, Great Britain, France, and all the other members of the sort of Western areas. This is not to suggest, however, that all of industry was well uh, developed and that there was not any weaknesses in terms of industrial uh, output. The majority of the weaknesses that had existed previously in the five-year plans before the Second World War still remained. So, for example, workers had less than they had in 1928. Worker rights were still significantly uh, worse. Working conditions actually got worse, they didn't get better. Uh, consumer goods didn't receive much attention again. They only made up around 12% of the investment in the industrial uh, regions. And so as a result of which, all of these problems that we can remember back to the earlier lessons on the five-year plans are exactly the same here. Bad working conditions, workers having less just in general than in 1928, and consumer goods being um, very, very uh, having very little attention given to them. In addition to this, there were also financial problems. The ruble in 1947 had devalued by around 90%, which is a significant increase in inflation. In terms of agricultural developments, uh, just before the war, we see that the agriculture sector was less productive than that of industry. One of the reasons for this was because, of course, of famines, or also because of the fact that collectivization wasn't particularly successful. But it was also owing to the fact that Stalin placed a heavier, a greater emphasis on the importance of industry rather than the importance of agriculture. In 1946, uh, a famine in Ukraine also compounded a number of problems. Stalin imposed strict policies on farmers uh, and private farms as soon as the war was over. And grain, um, even though these were all the cases, uh, by 1947 and after 1947, we do see an increase in grain production. And by 1942, grain production had gone back up to the pre-war levels, with in 1940 only um, 95 million tonnes of grain being harvested. Uh, but in uh, 1953, uh, we see that this was around 92 million tonnes, so back from the poor results during the war. So... These two statistics show that essentially in 1940, which of course when Stalin and the Soviet Union was not at war at that point in 1940, this was before the war in the USSR, um, they had 95 million tonnes of grain harvested. By 1953 this was essentially back to those levels, which was 92 million tonnes. So... In terms of assessing the post-war economy, you can make the argument on the one hand that the uh, Soviet Union benefited from the post-war boom, which every single country around the world essentially uh, managed to deal with and managed to actually experience in, in, some, in varying uh, different degrees of capacity. But also the implementation of new policies um, also increased the amount of economic output, specifically things like the five-year plans. But we can still make it very clear that the industrial uh, issues that plagued the five-year plans that existed before the war also plagued these new five-year plans in relation to workers' rights, working conditions and consumer products.